So we're out here along the Delaware River, and this is one of the stretches in the estuary where you can actually find the Atlantic sturgeon breeding. A genetically distinct subspecies of Atlantic sturgeon calls the Delaware River home. The Atlantic sturgeon populations that live in the Delaware River really are crashing. Um, you know, historically we've been talking about numbers of 180,000 Atlantic sturgeon in the Delaware River population. Now we're talking about less than 100 spawning adults. The population really is crashing and it's um, time to take swift, strong action so they can survive or we risk losing them. At the University of Maryland's Horn Point Lab, researchers are working with Atlantic sturgeon captured from the Delaware River in Chesapeake Bay, a program that has been discontinued had the goal of restoring the sturgeon population. Well, they are prehistoric. They've been around since the Jurassic period, so they were here when dinosaurs were around. Um, they pretty much haven't changed at all since that time period. They are completely cartilaginous, so just like sharks, they don't have a skeleton. Their only bony features are these scutes that you can see running along the top, those diamond shapes, and along their lateral line. Um, they also are bottom feeders. They have a tube mouth, which you can see on the bottom, which sucks up their food. They do not have any teeth. They actually crush their food as it comes through their mouth. They move like ghosts through the water. The Delaware River is perfect sturgeon habitat. They're spawned in fresh water. Um, the adults are looking for a hard bottom area to lay eggs. So any place where you're going to have compact sand or um, pebbles, gravel, things like that, that's where the adults will spawn. Um, then the young will hang out in the freshwater parts of the river for their first year or so and then migrate out into the estuary. Um, they are bottom feeders, so they're looking for areas where there's going to be sand or um, mud where they can forage for food such as soft clams, polychaetes, uh, mud crabs, um, some slower moving fish. With the population plummeting, the Delaware Riverkeeper says an ongoing Army Corps of Engineers deepening project for the main shipping channel in the Delaware is only making matters worse by destroying the river bottom. Yeah, um, deepening hits the habitat of the Atlantic sturgeon in a couple of ways. It physically alters critical habitat uh, at the bottom of the river, particularly in the Marcus Hook reach of the river where we have a rock ledge which is important for the young of year of Atlantic sturgeon. Um, but the freshwater reaches of the river, of the estuary, are where the Atlantic sturgeon need to go to spawn. And as we shrink the freshwater reaches of the river by moving the salt line further up because of deepening, um, and move the salt line further up because we've got less fresh water coming down because potentially we're sucking it out in order to support gas drilling. We're reducing the spawning grounds of the Atlantic sturgeon. To help track the sturgeon, Delaware biologists have been capturing the fish and placing acoustic transponders and ID tags on them. The possibility of shale gas drilling or fracking poses another potential threat. The process uses millions of gallons of water for just one well. Gas drilling is another added pressure to the Atlantic sturgeon that they simply can't afford right now because the numbers are too low. And when you um, add gas drilling to deepening, the implications for the Atlantic sturgeon population are simply dire. Although the Atlantic sturgeon is now listed as an endangered species, there is criticism of the response from federal agencies charged with protecting the fish. The National Marine Fisheries Service is falling way short of its responsibility to protect the Delaware River population of Atlantic sturgeon from extinction. They did take the step of listing the Atlantic sturgeon that are in the Delaware River as endangered. And that should mean a very high level of protection and vigilance by the National Marine Fisheries Service. And yet, um, wh when the Army Corps of Engineers came to the National Marine Fisheries Service to move forward its deepening project, the, the National Marine Fisheries Service took very few actions, very few steps to protect the Atlantic sturgeon. One of the biggest steps it took was it increased the amount of monitoring that has to be in place to identify when Atlantic sturgeon are killed by deepening. How does that protect the sturgeon population? The next 14-mile stretch of the Delaware River Deepening Project is scheduled to start late this year or early next year. I believe that the Deepening Project could put them over the edge. Um, so this is a very dire circumstance and we could be directly responsible by letting that project move, to move forward. We could be the ones responsible for losing 
this genetic line of Atlantic sturgeon from the face of the earth forever.